This is what my first 20 ounces of gold taught me. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Yankee Stacking. It's been 12 years since I first purchased gold bullion as a stacker. And I wanted to share with you what my first 20 ounces of gold taught me back then and continue to teach me even today. I bought this tube of one ounce American gold eagles from a small local coin shop in my area. No, it wasn't the coin and stamp shop. Uh, it, it was years before I met Tim, but it was right after the global financial crisis. And great thought, discussion with my wife, a lot of prayer, went into making this purchase. He, uh, he ordered it directly from the U.S. Mint. And uh, I have to admit, when he called me to tell me it had arrived, I was really excited. I was also a little bit anxious. I mean, it's not every day that I spend $20,000 on precious metals. It was a tremendous commitment for uh, a family of five. The first thing I noticed when uh, the dealer handed me this tube of gold eagles was the weight. Oh, man, it's heavy. You instantly realize that you're truly holding a real, tangible asset. And the you know, hefty weight is due to gold's incredible density. You know, it's one of the most dense elements on the planet. It's much denser than lead. It's over twice as dense as silver. Only platinum edges it out. It was that density that inspired me to later establish stacking dents as one of the tenets of stacking the Yankee way. Having such a high concentration of wealth contained in such a small package is so remarkable to me. It allows that wealth to be hidden, uh, moved, protected, much easier than other tangible assets, including silver. So the dealer said while I was holding this, uh, you probably should open the tube. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be wise, I said. So, whoa. The next thing that struck me was the beauty of the gold coins. Yes, beauty is certainly in the eye of the beholder. Some people prefer uh, a silver luster. But when I pulled these coins out, I remember being stunned. And when I got home and I pulled them out for Mrs. Yankee, she was stunned too. In fact, you know, when I put gold and silver on my desk to uh, you know, record videos and, and Mrs. Yankee walks by, it's the gold that she is drawn to. I think I can understand gold fever, you know, the power that infected those back in uh, 1849 during the uh, Great California Gold Rush. Uh, it was arguably one of the most significant events to shape American history during the first half of the 19th century. So, you know, I get it. It's beautiful. Okay, so gold... Uh, possesses um, price stability that I really like as a stacker. Gold fluctuates a lot less than silver or other speculative assets. And as an older guy nearing retirement, that's appealing. It's a big reason central banks all around the world stack this stuff. I get a small sense of what it's like to act like a central bank. You know, yeah, I, I know banking is largely a con game now. I, I understand that. But central banks are powerful and they love gold. Russia recently reached a record for its gold reserves. It now ranks fifth in the world for the size of its holdings. Over 20% of its reserves 
in gold. 2,300 tons of it. And that is likely to increase a lot in the years ahead. So central banks like uh, Serbia, Hungary, Thailand, France, Germany, they've all added gold to their reserves in recent months. In fact, Brazil just bought over 41 tons of it recently. So I've learned to be the bank when it comes to gold. I started using that term back in 2018, be the bank, and it applies in many ways. But as it relates to gold, I think that that is important. That's something I've learned since buying the uh, Yankee Cannon. Yes, I've since added a significant amount of silver to my stack. There's really good upside potential with silver. But gold was and still is the foundation of my stack. I learned that gold is one of the best forms of wealth preservation, generational wealth preservation. But I also learned that this, you know, gold American eagles aren't the only way to stack gold. Okay, there's more than just gold bullion out there. And at the urging of many of my subscribers, I checked out pre-33 gold. Oh, speaking of subscribers, why don't you take a quick second to make sure you've subscribed to my channel. Click that bell too while you're at it so you won't miss any of my future videos. So I picked up a couple pre-1933 gold coins uh, and I talked at length with Tim on a good gold strategy with these constitutional gold pieces, much like I do with my constitutional or junk silver. But this tube of gold right here definitely started the journey that's now moving towards other great gold options. Finally, what buying these 20 ounces of gold 12 years ago taught me is it's not enough. <laughs> it just isn't. You know, while the spot price of gold and silver are artificially low, while uh, the powers that be are still able to manipulate the price before they ultimately lose control, and while investors are seemingly clueless about the future of our dollar hegemony and the dangers of inflation, I'm protecting even more of my portfolio with gold. Wow, that's heavy. <laughs> I have a target of 50 ounces by my retirement. I have over 35 ounces now, so I am 71% there. If things go as planned, God willing, of course, I should make that goal in just a few years. And that is something I strongly urge all of you to do. Those of you watching who have established your stack with silver, good job. Keep it up. But I would also encourage you to check into buying some gold along with your silver. Yes, it takes discipline. It isn't always easy, but I truly believe it's well worth every ounce. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like button on the way out. And as always, I hope your day is... A-OK. -okay.